what's going on guys it's Tay from Rascal Tech and today I'm back out on the e-bike I call this a 1500 watt e-bike because even though it was a 1000 watt kit that I ordered with the additional cells and the increase in amps if you can see it on the watt meter I'm actually pulling just under 1500 watts equivalent and this thing goes like if you pedal with it you can absolutely shift and we're already doing 30 miles an hour yes this does not hang around for a bike that's so light as well with the very small battery pack i'm only using four amp hours worth of batteries I've basically got three lithium polymer batteries from my uh, radio control planes i've got two 4S 4000 milliamp packs, one 6S 4000 milliamp pack. I'm trying to thought there. All together for a total of a 14S cell pack. So 14S 1P. So the mileage isn't that great. I can get about six miles depending on if I pedal with a little bit of throttle. And as you can see, I tend to have the PAS off because. I actually don't enjoy the ride with the PAS. If I go to like, let's just set it on three quickly. So I'm, I'm on three. I think I've got this on settings between one and nine. So, you know, nine will just absolutely slingshot you to the moon. What are we up to now? Yeah. I really wish it kind of cut off the power as soon as you stop pedaling. One thing that you'll find with this kit is that, you know, you have to kind of gauge how long it's going to take for the motor to stop trying to propel you because you know you'll start to pedal and let's say that you're coming to a stop without the additional brake sensors and i'm not too sure if this kit has got the option of having the additional brake sensors but you know if you pedal and the motor kicks in when you least expect it to it's not going to be the best so that's why I tend to just leave the PAS on zero and I just modulate it with the throttle instead. So, you know, pedaling, a little bit of throttle assist. And I kind of found that as my favorite way to ride around on this bike. So the PAS sensor is just there for the sake of it, but very rarely gets used. So at the moment we've done 1.4 miles. We've had a very light use of the battery, so just take a right up here. So you know, throttle down, bit of pedaling, easily straight up this. So in situations like this, I'm not really gonna use the motor too much because I you know you don't need it. Not unless you want to go down here. You can probably hit about 35 miles an hour, but I'm not looking to die today. So you know I find this a very nice bike to ride. Even though the front forks have got no suspension at all, like literally nothing, it's a solid fork. You know, I could do with maybe replacing the front forks at some point you know they do need to get sprayed let's just um slow down a bit on ps3 so ps3 pretty much nothing you can actually change this as well so you can have it set as one to three i think one to five and one to nine i'm currently testing one to nine on this and just try four yeah. try five fucking hell jesus christ five just slingshotted me into the moon this is what i'm saying about this this esc it's not the best you know it does what it does don't get me wrong it's great for the money to have the additional features because with most cheap kits it's just going to be you know you plug the battery in you pull the throttle or spin the crank and that's about it whereas with this kit you can actually change some settings jesus christ that was lucky shoelace come undone cool. 
do with some gloves on. As you can see, windproof gloves. Funny story about these gloves. So after the first ride out on this, I must have done about a five, six mile bike ride with fingerless gloves. And I think when I come back home, my hands were so cold, I had my first ever instance of what people may call frostbite. May not have been exactly that, but when I mean my hands were burning, literally, there's nothing I can do for about 20 minutes solid, they were burning. The only thing my mum was saying to me was, put them underneath your armpits, and that's all you can do. And I never want to go through that pain again. So that riding in the British weather, um, definitely needed a set of these. And these have saved me, you know. I don't mind with my ears getting cold or anything else like that, but with my hands getting that cold, I'll show you the footage where I was literally riding back with one hand, you know, blowing hot air onto the other hand. It was so damn cold. And when you're halfway into the rides, it's, a, it's another halfway back, so you're kind of screwed, no matter what you do. So right now we're just setting two. Two we're getting about 111 watts. Move this so I can maintain a nice cycle speed of roughly 11 miles per hour with little effort on the pedals. This you could just ride around. If I was to ride around like this all day, I reckon I could probably get about eight miles from this pack for a four amp hour pack. You know, relatively light. The only downside to it is because it's three packs, I have to charge every single pack individually. Luckily enough, I can do it at the same time because I've got one dual charger, which does 4S Max, and I've got one single LiPo charger, which will do up to 6S. The only downside to the one that does 6S is it can only pull, you can only put about 2.2 amps max into the battery. So whilst I'm charging it, it actually does take quite a while sometimes. You know what, let's go through the woods. Go down here. Hmm. Oh. Take this off, let's power up this hill. Quick. Tell you one thing, the brakes are good on these. Yeah, so I've actually pinched the e-bike, the one from the stealth bomber build. Oh. <coughs> on this. So we've got 203 mil discs front and rear four piston hydraulic calipers oh it's funny things not the easiest thing to lift the only downside to this rear hub motor is how bloody heavy it is right, let's have a proper nice hill now easily up this oh you know i haven't even tried to upgrade this yet I think my plans to begin with for this is try and source a decent battery that's going to stay on the bike all the time, i.e. build my own 18650 pack, maybe a 21700 pack. Um, and then after that, the speed controller is going to get modified. So I'm going to modify the rails which apply the voltage going to beef them up and then uh, not too sure if I'm going to look at upgrading the MOSFETs just yet I might do that I might not just give it a little rip it's currently off-road with no suspension at all oh test the brakes of course she stops real good this is great you know there's no point going fast if you can't stop so we're going to take a left up here. I think this should get me going where I need to go. You know what I love about this bike? It's so light and nimble. 
Right, let's uh, slowly come past these people. Thank you. Now, there isn't really the frame to do off-roading in, so let's go... So I'll go straight down here. This will take me to the big hill that I want to get to. Three miles out now, 3.6 miles. Probably got another two miles left, two and a bit miles. So I'll have to consider going on. Sorry guys, I'm gonna to have to end the video short there because the jacket decided to cover the camera rendering the rest of the video pretty much useless. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to hopefully releasing the build video pretty soon as well.